Hey everybody, so like I always said, if you see this shirt, that means that it's time for another topic video. And today's topic is, uh, so one of my subscribers wrote in the comments that here's a topic, fandom keeps listing slash wishing that all major sex scenes are going to be in the next film from the pages just because it's rated R, ha 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 ha. Bro, what's your opinion? Thanks. Okay, thanks for the question. And so let me go ahead and say this right up at the front. Just because it's rated R does not mean that all major that all the sex scenes will be in the film because we still want an R. And when it comes down to the MPAA, uh, MPAA, which is the film ratings here in the U.S., and that's where we will get the rating, you know, here in the U.S., uh, for them, sex is the kiss of death. They treat sex so much worse than they do violence. Let me use an example here. If you pretty much... Um, you could murder, I mean, you could on screen, you could literally see hundreds of millions of people just completely gunned down. But as long as you don't show one drop of blood, you will get a PG-13. Same thing, you will still get an R. There are a couple of R-rated films out there, such as The Passion of the Christ and Saving Private Ryan that had multiple graphic violence, multiple scenes of graphic violence in it that had even the most, um, it, the biggest of uh, film critics, including myself, saying, you know, how did how did this film escape an NC-17? How did this film not get an NC-17 just for the violence? And that's because the MPAA treats violence a lot better than sex. They treat it a lot less than sex. So already, when you have sexual content in a film, you're already kind of, you know, tiptoeing toward an R, and in some cases, pole vaulting toward an R, depending on the graphicness of what you're showing. And just to use another example here, uh, if you remember, and because again, this is the same series that people seem to compare the After series to, which is the Fifty Shades. Again, those films were rated R, but they still did not include all the sex scenes in the film. Now, here's what I'm concerned. Now, here's where I'm coming down on the rating. I am very excited for an R rating. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way real quick, because when you read the books, they are either NC-17 or X, depending on who you are. But yeah, no, they deserve a, a hard R rating. They deserve an R rating. It actually is an R rating. But, and I've always, and, I, and I've said this in other, and I, I, I've actually said this in other videos, and I'll say it again here, since I'm actually, you know, talking about the rating here. Uh, I will believe it that we're actually getting an R when I actually open up the daily MPAA ratings and see after we collided rated R for dot dot dot. That's when I'll believe it because again, if you look at the first one, it's clear that they were going for an R. It's clear that, you know, different countries got about 50 million different versions of this film. So... I'll only believe this when I actually see, you know, after we collided, rated R for dot, dot, dot. Um, because again, this fandom has been burned more times than I care to count by Anna Todd, by Jennifer Gibgott, by the producers. I mean, we've been burned many times before. So this could just be one more thing that right now everybody could be saying, yeah, we're going for an R. But guess what? The U.S. still gets a PG-13. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, the one thing that does concern me, though, and, and I've seen this happen way too many times before, where the first film or like the um, or I'll even use like a TV series as like an example where the first couple of seasons are on a on, on, on a network where you actually have to make edits, where you have to make cuts. And then all of a sudden, the minute that they get on a network where, you know, they pretty much have free reign to do whatever they want, they pretty much use it as an, as an excuse to just, you know, go over the top with the blood, sex, violence, uh, language, whatever they, whatever content that they've been holding back on. And that's what I don't want to see happen with this film. I don't want to all of a sudden, you know, get the PG-13 with the first one, which it never should have been PG-13 in the first place. Let's go ahead and, you know, let me go ahead and say that here. This first film never should have been PG-13. Not that there's anything in the film that warranted an R. I'm just saying that with the books, this thing never should have been PG-13. We should not be sitting here, you know, saying that the first film was PG-13. Because one of the worst things that I hated about the film, and this is what I'm going to say about the sequel, and this is why I'm going to say that, okay, if we get into another situation where everybody else seems to be getting a rougher cut of the film, but the U.S. gets a, like a PG-13, that's where I'm going to tap out and say I am not going to go see the film. Because one of the worst things I hated about the first film is that so many scenes in the film 
felt like the TV version. Like, like somehow I had been tricked into watching the TV version. And let me explain that real quick. So take the scene in outside the dorm room after they meet Steph and Tristan for the first time. And Tessa and her mom are talking, and Tessa's mom, played by Selma Blair, wonderfully by Selma Blair, it really does hurt my heart that there's a very good chance that she's not going to come back uh, for the sequels because of her health. Uh, that My heart, again, goes out to her and her family uh, during this tough time. But yeah, uh, there's this uh, one line of dialogue where it almost, like, it didn't really click at that moment, but it started to click. Like, I started to just feel something in the back of my head, just started to feel something deep down inside where Tessa's mom says, that room reeked of, and the line cuts. Now, when I saw the unrated cut in uh, the, can the Canadian unrated cut, they actually finished the line. It says, that room reeked of weed. But in the, in the cut that we got in theaters, or the cut that we got here in the U.S., it actually says, you know, that room reeked of, and the line cuts. And so that, to me, is a TV version that I refuse to believe that even in a PG-13, you cannot say the word weed. I mean, I, that, that's why I kind of want to sit down with Anna Todd. I want to sit down with Jennifer Gibgott, and I will even put this to you, my, to, to you, my subscribers. Hey, can you reach out to Anna Todd and say, hey, you know, this person wants to talk to you. Hey, this person really wants to, you know... Uh, you know, we can do this through direct message on Twitter, and I'll even agree to make this completely off the record, but I do have questions that I want answered, because again, it feels like here in the U.S. that we were completely tricked into seeing a, P into, into seeing a TV version of the film, that somehow uh, somebody accidentally sent out like a TV version of what, what would ultimately be the TV version that will air on TV, say like E! Network or Freeform or, you know, it's a network like that. But anyway, back to what I was saying about the rating here. What I don't want to see happen, uh, where I have seen this happen, you know, more than a few times, is when you you when you feel the chains come off, when you feel uh, that the, the 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 creators or the producers or the scriptwriters were were now given free reign to do whatever you want with the content. Uh, way too many times I've seen it where they just all of a sudden go you know buck wild you know crazy in terms of the content. And what I don't want to see happen is where, um, like, let's just say, because I think that it's it's been said, I think Anna Todd said that we're going to open up with Harden's Nightmares. I made another video saying that the Harden's Nightmares will be included, so I feel like this is not some big reveal unless you're seeing this video for the first time, uh, where, where I think it was also said in that same video that, like, they will open up with Harden's Nightmares. Now, what I don't want to see, or what, what I'm fine with, but... I don't want it to come off as like when he immediately like like jerks up and you know starts you know sweating and breathing heavily and going like fuck 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 like I don't want him to say like 50 million fucks as if he he then you know will turn to the camera and say hi I'm Hero Finds Tiffin in case you didn't realize we now got an R so fuck it yeah so fuck yeah uh yeah so yeah that that's basically what I don't want to see happen where all of a sudden where it just feels like they're just throwing in, you know, either more fucks or, you know, more graphic sex, uh, just for the sake of it. I want it all to, I want it all to serve the story. I don't want it to feel, uh, gratuitous. I don't want it to feel, because again, when you read the books, every time they do a sex scene, yes, it feels rated R. It feels NC-17, but they're not doing like, they're like not on every single page is this thing rated R. It never, it never feels like on every single page, like, oh, you're reading a rated R thing. Cause like there are, you know, pages upon pages where, you know, where you don't read any R rated content. Uh, but yeah, but that's what I'm, what I don't want the, the second film or the third film or the fourth film, however many films we get, that's what I don't want this to turn into. Uh, but yeah, to go back to what the original question is, is that yes, uh, just because it's rated R does not mean that we're going to get like all the major sex scenes. Does not mean that we're going to get all the sex scenes in the world. Because again, we want to avoid an NC-17 because an NC-17 is very much the kiss of death. So for a lot of you, because like I know a lot of you are underage, a lot of you, you know, cannot get into these films. Well, let me tell you something. If you did get in like with a with an older sibling or a parent, like if you'll just say, oh, I'll go with like my older sibling, my parent. Well, guess what? If you if this thing gets an NC-17, uh, you won't see it, period. At all. You will not see it until somebody leaks it out online. 
because that's what NC-17 means. No child 17 or under, period, at all. So that's what we want to avoid with this. We want, we want them to go for the R. We want them to go as far as they can with the R. I actually want to see an R. I don't want this to be another situation like the first film where everybody else seems to get like a rougher cut of the film, but the U.S. gets a PG-13 cut, which is why I've always said, hey, you want to make this thing rated R? You want to say that it's rated R? Great. Fantastic. But again, you said the same thing with the first one. You know, it's very clear that everybody else seems to have gotten a rougher cut of the film, but the U.S. got stuck with a PG-13 cut. And I'll tell you right now, if that happens again, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right now, you will, I will not be seeing the film. I am not doing this again. I am not sitting through another TV version at all. I am not sitting through another TV version of this, of this series. That's the part where I go like, I'm done. Like, yeah, I, I'm done. You know, I'll still bring you guys like all the news in terms of like, you know, after we fell and like all that stuff. But for me personally, I would be done watching the films unless it came like late night on TV or something. Uh, because again, that was just ridiculous. Here in the U.S., that was just ridiculous that we effectively got a TV version. Uh, but yeah, uh, it, it made no sense to me. And again, I'll continue to say it. Oh, by the way, uh, you want to get even more angry? Uh, when Good Boys comes out in August, go see Good Boys. Go see... Uh, I know I said that I cannot really recommend this. Like, even though I love the film, I cannot recommend this. But go see Midsommar. Uh, if you have a strong stomach, go see Midsommar. And then come back and tell me that we could not get a PG... That, that Oh, we had to cut this thing down. Uh, the after movie here in the U.S. Because, uh, you know, whoo, we got to protect people. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've seen way too many films in my lifetime to know that that was a bunch of horse shit. That what they did to the after film is a bunch of horse shit. And I think that at some point I am going to make a bigger video talking about the censorship and talking about my feelings on what the after film went through. And I don't think a lot of you are going to be happy. And I think a lot of you are going to be marching on Avrion Pictures or marching on Anatod or everybody else involved in this film by the end of that video. So jump down to the comment section below. Let me know what you think of all this. Let's just go through all the stuff that you'll be able to find on this channel. So every day I am doing the daily uploads of the after series read throughs. I'll be going through the entire franchise. So keep looking forward to that. They will be daily uploads barring any types of personal illnesses or issues. The first two books are already up on the channel to their completion. I am working through after we fell now. I will do after ever happy and I will do the book before. So it will be the entire franchise. So keep looking forward to that. Now that we have the official green light on the after we collided movie, I'll be bringing you guys constant, constant, constant updates on that. So keep looking forward to that. You guys will be so updated that you will be going like, Charles, buddy, pal, mate, buddy, we're updated. We're updated. You know, we, yeah, we're updated. You know, thank you, but we're updated. Every other day, I will be posting different topics that come up in the after fandom. So if there are any topics out there that you guys would like to see me talk about, you can either leave it down in the comments or you can find me on either Twitter or Twitter or my email, all the relevant information is on the about section of the channel. And again, I want to say thank you to the bottom of, from the bottom of my heart uh, for all your love and support. I feel very loved and supported by this fandom. As always, remember, if there is an afternator out there that you guys know who has no idea about this channel, go ahead and share the channel with them. Uh, let's continue to grow the channel. You know, go ahead and share the channel around. And remember, as always, I'll see you later, afternators. Love you guys.